Hello, we're standing in front of the Fortezza di Montalcino, which is the fortified uh, castle you see behind me here at the heart of Montalcino. And we are just about to enter the tasting of the 204 Brunello di Montalcino. This is the first time the journalists are really given a chance to taste the wines. You can see my colleagues um, walking up the ramparts to get inside. And uh, a year ago, this region was rocked by a major fraud scandal in which uh, many of the big producers were accused of adding grapes such as Merlot and Cabernet that are not allowed in the production of Brunello di Montalcino into those wines illegally. So uh, we're very curious to uh, taste the wines today and see what they see what comes out and uh, to see the atmosphere of what, what the producers are saying and how the journalists are reacting one year after this, uh, this unfortunate scandal. <laughs> Sangiovese here. I'm getting a sense of um, wet earth, pressed violets, uh, bright cherry, a lot of the aromas that you would typically associate with Sangiovese. And that's interesting only because I find these wines different than past vintages. Um, for example, these are these are two wines, the 203 here and the 204 from uh, the Trinuta Grappone Mazzi, which is the Ruffino estate here in Montalcino. You can already see from the color, the 203 is much darker and uh, more saturated, and the 204 is a little bit lighter and a little bit more vibrant in color. And you really get a sense of jammy, jammy cooked fruit here. It's not overwhelming, but it's definitely present. And with the 204, um, it's just a more linear and more elegant expression of Santa Beza. Two thousand and four was what we like to consider to be a very classic year. Uh, it was a year where we had finally, after several years of unusual climate, where we had hot summers, cool summers, dry summers, sometimes too much rain in, uh, in the spring. In two thousand and four, we had sort of the perfect storm of conditions. We had a good rainy spring, which allowed for the grapes to uh, the soil to hold on to a lot of the uh, water reserves so that during the hot summer it would be able to release them and gradually the vines wouldn't suffer any hydric stress. The other most important factor of the 2004 vintage was that we had the perfect balance of very hot days and very cool nights. That's what is so crucial in wine country. It was, it's what makes real wine country uh, the best uh, conditions for, for, for great wines. Hi, I'm here with uh, Tiziana Frescobaldi, Hi, Frescobaldi. Hello. 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 at the beautiful uh, Castel Giocondo in uh, Montalcino. And we've just had a chance over lunch to taste the 1993, 1995, 1997, and 2004 Brunello That's di Montalcino. Right. Tiziana, can you give us a little bit of history of yes, the property? Yes, of course. This is Castel Giocondo, and this is one of the uh, most uh, historical estates here in Montalcino. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of the oldest ones. And uh, the Frescobaldi family has been involved in the uh, early 70s, and we've um, acquired this estate in uh, the late 80s. And so ever since then, we have been producing uh, Bonello Castel Giocondo almost every year. Most fantastic event you can imagine. I've never seen anything comparable uh, nowhere in the world, to be honest. I mean, this is a, a more than 500 wines. Uh, 140, 150 different wineries were presenting their wine. There are um, a million journalists, yeah. and <laughs> there are. It's a fabulous event. enthusiast. We're here at the Stazione Leopolda, which is an old abandoned railroad station at the heart of Florence. 
um, attending the Antiprima of Chianti Classico. Uh, it's an annual event, it's very exciting. We have uh, 350 producers of Chianti Classico present. Um, they've brought us all of their wines, uh, 208 and Antiprima, 207s, 206s, and Reservas that go all the way back to, actually there are a few examples of 201. Um, we've been very fortunate this year because we have a couple of very good vintages to taste. And uh, it's a very exciting time. This is the biggest event in Tuscany for, uh, for these wines. And uh, since 30% of Chianti Classico is sold in the United States, it's an exciting time for us in the States as well to kind of get our first taste of these wines. After two fabulous vintages, such as 2006 and 2007, unfortunately 2008 has had a bit of a uh, problem uh, with uh, a little bit of hail, mm. unfortunately. <laughs> but that's, you know, it's something that is hurt some vineyards, but at all, no. So, in terms nice. of quantity, it's not going to be huge. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. You know, in spite of difficulties that are so obvious at this moment, in terms of quality, I think it's uh, really moving, producers are really moving together, and, you know, this kind of events help a lot. Moving together in the sense of quality, there's sort of there is a more unity than there has been in the past, uh, quality-wise. So searching a little bit more the same. Perfect. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you. Multipulciano with uh, the enologist Dr. Enzo Potarella, who works for all the Antinori estates and in particular La Bracesca, which is the estate here in the area that makes Vino Nobile di Montepulciano. Dr. Cotarella, how are the vintages that we can wait for in the United States, the coming, the wines coming to the US? 2006, 2007, 2008, yes. even if, I mean, now you are going to receive 2006. I mean, there are three very good vintages, even if they are different. 2006 is more balanced, 2007 is rich, full, plenty of aroma, really a wonderful vintage, in my opinion maybe the best of the last 30, 40 years, even better than 97. 2008 is a particular vintage, when you say particular sometimes you say means no so and so, no particular because the um, uh, temperature and the climatic condition during 2008 has been very peculiar. I mean, now 2008 is a wine with a lot of aroma, a lot of intensity, a lot of vibrancy. So it's really, I mean, what it's the wine I like as San Giovanni. Because maybe it is not, it is not so rich as 2006 and 2007. Maybe it's a little bit more acidic. But it has this, it has this vibrancy, this, uh, this nervosity, you say. And it's a wine really that push, push and push I like very much. So we have good things to look forward to. Yes, we are lucky because in a difficult period, in a certain sense, in the global crisis, we have three vintages from Tuscany that are wonderful. 2006, 2007, 2008, we never had. 